Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rames Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rames Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 56 in the Dewey Rames Bible, but Psalm 57 in the RSV. Unto the end, destroy not for David, for an inscription of a title when he fled from Saul into the cave. The cave being referred to here is the cave from 1 Samuel 24, where David was hiding in the desert near some sheepfolds. This psalm was probably written after Saul had actually arrived at the cave, since when he did, he used the cave as a restroom and David had the chance to kill him, but didn't. Because of this, Saul's trust in David was restored for a time, giving David plenty of reasons to be thankful to God. And this is mostly a psalm of thanksgiving. The words, destroy not, seem to be a title of sorts and may refer to the mercy God has shown David preventing his destruction, or to David's decision to spare the life of Saul, or both. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for my soul trusteth in thee, and in the shadow of thy wings will I hope, until iniquity pass away. A plea for God's mercy, because all our hope and trust is in God. I will cry to God the Most High, to God who hath done good to me. He hath sent from heaven and delivered me. He hath made them a reproach that trod upon me. God hath sent his mercy and his trust, and he hath delivered my soul from the midst of the young lions. God has shown mercy to me, revealing the truth that exonerated me of wrongdoing. This is exactly what David had just experienced, the revealing of the truth that he'd never plotted against Saul to kill him, which put him back in the good graces of the king, saving him from danger. I slept troubled. The sons of men whose teeth are weapons and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth. They prepared a snare for my feet, and they bowed down my soul. They dug a pit before my face, and they are fallen into it. David's sleep was disturbed by fear because of all the people who wanted to kill him, lying about him to the king. They set up traps for him, but in the end it backfired on them, because God is superior to everything and everyone in the world. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and rehearse a psalm. Arise, O my glory, arise psaltery and harp. I will arise early, I will give praise to thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing a psalm to thee among the nations. When things go well for us, we should praise God for that, showing our gratitude and sharing that with others so that they also know how grateful we are to God and why. This is especially meaningful in the case of David, who promised to do this numerous times when God saved him from his enemies. Now that God has done that, it's praising time. For thy mercy is magnified even to the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth. The mercy of God is even greater than the sky and clouds because he reigns over everything. Though the early parts of this psalm carry the flavor of a plea for help, perhaps to appeal for these times of relief to continue on, it's almost entirely a psalm of thanksgiving to God, in exchange for the mercy he's shown to David by revealing the truth about him. As anticipated, the truth vindicated David, and as promised, David thanked God for having saved him. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.